Hi students. Unfortunately, the other day when I went over lesson 12, I forgot to hit the record button. So I'm going to have to do it again for you. This lecture, lesson 12, is going to be all about adding detail views, doing sheet metal parts. We're going to do some aligned views. We'll go over adding pages and chamfer notes. Okay, so let's start with a detail view. Let's start with something nice and simple. There are times out in the world where we need to emphasize and describe small features on a much larger part. And I have an example of that right here in front of us. I have a large block and I have a little cutout right here that I'm going to want to describe on the print. So let's go ahead and make a print and see how this is going to work. So we'll do the same thing we always do. Say file, make drawing from print. We use our piece part print template. And of course, we'll go through all the usual stuff we do, setting up our print. And we'll get our views just right. This looks like a nice view to use as a front view, so I'm going to project off that. So we'll say insert, drawing view, projected. Project up our isometric. Whenever you're putting in the isometric, always make sure to get rid of the hidden lines and we also generally make it a smaller scale. We're never going to put dimensions on it. It's only to help visualization. So I'm going to use a custom scale. And let's see what half scale looks like. Yeah, a little bit small. Let's go to one to one scale. Not bad. Okay, I'm going to come up here under display style. And I'll choose hidden line removed. Get rid of all the dotted lines. Okay, so this is starting to look pretty good. Now we still have that little detail down here that we're going to want to describe. But let's try doing it the normal way and see what can go wrong if we don't do it right. As always, I want to start by doing my maximum overall dimensions. So the, when the machinist goes and tries to look for a block of metal, plastic, whatever the case may be, they know exactly what size they're looking for. Okay, so there's my maximum overall dimensions. Now I'm going to go through every feature. I'm going to size the features and I'm going to locate the features. So I, I see two threaded holes here, and I know they're threaded because I see the major diameter as a hidden dotted line. So let's insert our hole callout. We'll do insert, annotations, and we'll come down to hole callout. Click on the solid edge, drag that down out of the way. Okay, so because I did not cut extrude circles, and I used the whole wizard. I've got this very nice call out that completely describes that it's two holes. I'm going to use a 201 tap drill, go down three quarters of an inch, and then thread it quarter 20 down half an inch. Okay, so that's quite pretty. Now we've got to locate those two features. I go off a solid edge that can be measured from. And when I'm picking holes, I always choose the solid inner edge. That up there. Put that up there. And the height down from the top edge. Five eighths. Now let's come in and try and define this.
Okay, that's that's not horrible, but you know, if this print were any busier, this little notch detail down here, that'd be really hard to see. So let's do it as a detail view. And I'll show you a better way to do that. Something much much more visible and clearer. I'm going to insert a detail view. I'll go insert, drawing view, come down here to detail. I'm going to pick in the center of the region that I want to display. Okay, so it began my detail view. It's calling it view C. That's a problem. We always start at A and then all derived views will go A, B, C, D, E, right down the alphabet. We'll fix that. We'll make that an A. And personally, I like the with leader style. But at the moment, we'll just put that detail view right over there. And I'm going to drag out that leader right there so it's nice and visible. So now, because I'm telling the reader exactly where I'm looking, I can put this detail view anywhere I would like. So I'm going to click on it, and I'm hitting Control X. I'm going to cut it. SolidWorks says it's deleting the view. Well, yeah, not really. Then I'm going to come over to Sheet 2, where things are a little less busy, and I'm going to paste it. And I'm pressing Control V for paste. I'm going to click on that view. It's still pretty small. So I want to make that much, much larger. So it's currently at 4 to 1. Let's take it up to 12 to 1. That's not bad. So now I'll smart dimension it. Okay, that is much more readable than trying to have some small detail down in a corner where the extension lines might actually obliterate part of the feature or the arrowheads are the same size as the feature. Anytime you get into that kind of a situation, think about putting a detail view in. And that is also a demonstration of how you would move a view to another page. As long as the reader knows where they're looking, I could have details stacked up, one here, one here, right across, filling this whole page. Let's go back to sheet one. I'm clicking in the tabs in the lower left. Okay, so what else do we need on this? Well, I need to tell the machinist what to make it out of. And I just happen to remember from the model that the material is AISI 4340, a very high grade, readily hardenable steel. So let's put a material note in. I'm going to say notes. Remember, when you're putting notes on a print, it's always in all <coughs> Excuse me. Notes on a, on a print are always in all capitals. There we go. The next thing we need, cylindrical faces. They always take a center line. I see a cylindrical face in here. So I'm going to come up, grab my center line. And the last item of business is to come and make sure that your title block is properly updated. So today is 10 9 20. I'm just going to click on that. 10 9 20. Our orthographic views. Our 
orthographic views are using the sheet scale, which is two to one. So that's okay. In this case, I do have a sheet two. So saying that this is sheet one of two is just fine. And the rev is actually rev one. Okay, so I'm all good. Let's make sure that our title block is fine on sheet two. Okay, so in this case, I only have one view here, but I'm specifically calling out that it's scale 12 to 1. So, okay, I know what's going on there. And I can accept that this scale is referring back to the orthographic views. That's fine. My drawing title is coming out of the model description. That's good. And my part number is coming out of the part number in the model, as is the rev. So this is all good. And I'll save it. <clears throat> now, if I were going to hand this in for homework, always, always, always make sure to give me the drawing file and your model. If I don't get both of them, I get X's on the screen, and it becomes very hard to grade. Okay, that is how I want to see you guys do detail views. You don't necessarily have to put a detail on a second page. The reason I did it is simply because I don't have a lot of extra space left on this print where I could actually put it. I would never put it in here because we always keep the area below the rev block open so that as this part goes through production and we make changes, we will annotate those changes right here, but we don't ever want to move the views around. Even if we move just the views around, but we don't change the part, I would still have to do an engineering change and call it a documentation change and change it here on the print. So make sure you plan ahead for that. Okay, that's a detail view. Let's do an aligned view now. I think I'd like to go over that and make that a little bit clearer. Okay, so here's a good part for doing an aligned view. If I do the typical glass box views, there's no view that's going to give me a true size for this face. If I were to come in and do the top view, and let's say I click on this edge, and I go to the center of the hole, it's going to give me the projected distance that's straight line right across, which will be wrong. Okay, so let's make a print of this and show how to get the proper true size of a face by using an aligned view. So we'll make draw. Make a drawing. Get rid of this isometric. Never accept this tapped hole callout that SolidWorks uses. I would much rather see you point directly down into the hole rather than in profile because there could be multiple holes, one behind the other, and then you'd have no idea which one you're actually pointing at. Okay. Gonna need that view. See, I think I can get rid of this view. We can always put it back in. And now to get the true size of that angled face, I'm gonna say insert, drawing view, and auxiliary. I'm gonna choose the edge. I'm going to project it. 
Okay, just like the detailed view, all derived views begin at AA. I'm going to make sure that starts at A. And then I need to show the reader where this view is coming from. So I'm going to grab this arrow. I'm going to stretch it out. So that it covers the area that's being looked at. I'm going to put it just like that. So I'm telling the reader to look in the direction of the arrows for view AA. Yeah, that's pretty good. And I can move the view name if it's inconvenient. I like that. So now let's start putting some dimensions on this thing. We start the same way we always do. The machinist is going to ask, what size chunk of metal do I need to make this thing? So let's give them the overall dimensions. Height. Width. Depth. Okay, that looks good. Next, we're going to go to each feature, and we're going to both size it and locate it. So I'm going to size this hole. We're going to do that with a hole call out. So we'll do insert, annotation, and we'll come down to hole call out. And because I did the hole wizard, I get this nice properly formatted hole call out. And now I'll locate it. And I'm going to the solid edge. I don't use the uh, crosshairs or the center mark. I always try to keep everything to solids. There we go. So now it's sized and located. That's fully defined. I like that. Okay, we need center marks on these radii. So I'm going to come up to the center mark tool. I'm going to choose the slot option. There we go. That looks good. While I'm here, I see a cylindrical face. We always put center lines on cylindrical faces. There we go. Good. So again, I'm going to size and locate my slot. I'm going to use a smart dimension. Come up on the edge. Oops. Didn't quite grab the smart dimension tool. Okay, so I have the start and stop points. Got to tell the machinist how far to go over. And I'm going to want the swap width. Okay, so I have my swap fully defined now. I'm going to need an isometric for this. So we'll insert drawing view and we are going to project an isometric from this front view. It's a little too large, let's turn it down. Half scale, nice. Every time we do the isometric, we've got to get rid of the hidden lines. So I'll do a hidden line removal. Tuck that right in there. Okay. Well, I 
I've got everything sized. Oops, there is one thing I'm missing. I need to tell the machinist how to make that chamfer. So a chamfer note is a special version of a smart dimension. So if I hit the drop down under smart dimension, I'll go to chamfer dimension. I'm going to choose the angled edge and then that flat edge. So what this note is telling the machinist is come in an inch and a half and then cut the part off at 45 degrees. Okay, so now I have everything I need, Oops, with the exception of one center point. I have everything I need to describe this part for the machinist. The only thing I don't have is what to make it out of. So I've run out of space, and what I probably need to do is just make everything smaller. I'm going to go to the parent view, or the front view. Let's try a custom half scale. We'll make that one half scale as well. The scales must always be uniform. And the reason for that goes back to the glass box, folks. Okay, so when I change the scale, we kind of mess things up. Notice that this edge is not aligning with this edge. Okay, so let's see if we can update the print and fix that. So I'm going to do a rebuild. And if it doesn't line up, I'm going to have to put that view back in again. Okay, it did not line up. So as much as it pains me, I'm going to get rid of that view and I'm going to reproject it. Because my edges must, must, must line up. So now this back edge lines up with this edge. And let's put those dimensions back on. So we'll do center mark, we'll do a slot center mark. We're going to locate our center mark in space and I'm going to go to solid edges. Okay, we've got our top view back in. This got a little bit messy. Let's pull that over. And let's see, are we missing anything? Yes, we are. So we need the depth of the part. Okay, so we have all of our information back on. That's looking good. And the last thing we're going to need is what to make this out of. 
So we'll put in our material node. And I just happen to remember from the model that this is 316 stainless steel. If I didn't recall what it was, I could come right over here in any one of these views on the print, expand it, I'll right click on the part and say open part. And here's my material, AISI 316 stainless steel. To go back to the drawing, just close the model, it takes you right back into the print. This drawing is only going to be a single page drawing. So we're going to get rid of all of the stuff that we're not using. We're going to keep this just as clean as we possibly can. So I'm going to come down here to sheet two. I'm going to right click on it and hit delete. And then as always, make sure that you fill out your title block. Today's date is 10-9-20. Our scale is 1 to 2, or half scale. So we need to change this. And this is a single sheet drawing, so it will be sheet one of one. And again, part number, drawing title, and rev are all being pulled out of our model. And there we go. I would consider that as a properly done drawing with an aligned or auxiliary view. Okay, so that's pretty jazzy. Now let's go and do a sheet metal part. Okay, sheet metal parts are going to be a multi-page drawing. But let's actually draw the model. And I think I'll draw on the top view. Let's start off as we always do, we'll just draw a rectangle of metal. As always, we start off with a fully defined sketch. And I'll say insert sheet metal, and we're going to create a base flange. We'll use the gauge table. And we'll do steel air bending for just common bend. I'm going to choose 16 gauge. Again, gauge is approximately 1 over the thickness. So 16 gauge will be approximately a 16th of an inch thick. And here's the actual value out of the tables, 0 0.0598. It's going to use a default radius of 0 0.08 inches. Okay, that's fine. As long as it's greater than the material thickness, so that we don't end up with flange cracking. There's our piece of metal, very nice. Let's clean up our screen a little bit, get rid of some of these planes and axes that we're not going to use. There we go, turn those off. And let's put a set of flanges on that. Okay. 
Okay, I think I want to do something a little more jazzy this morning. Let's say that I want these flanges to start and end one inch from the ends of the base flange. So I'm going to edit the flange profile. And I'm working in this sketch. Let's see, I think I'll draw a line here. It's okay to put other entities in your sketch. And let's see, trim here, trim here. As always, we're going to fully dimension it. I'm going to move that endpoint right up to the, to the line. There we go. And let's see, what else do we need? So I'm not quite sure. We are underdefined. Okay, we need a distance from the ends. And let's just make sure this repulse. It is going to rebuild, but I've got to go back and fix those lines. So that took care of making the flange one inch from either end. Notice, it's still saying underdefined. So what is underdefined? Aha! SolidWorks does not automatically fully define your sheet metal sketches. So do not let it take points away from you on the exam. Always make sure that any sketch is fully defined. Well, let's go in and do sketch 11 now. We'll do the same thing. Draw a vertical line there. Vertical line there. I think I'll get rid of that. 
as I said, I want to make them an inch from either end. Okay, I fully defined. Get out of that. Very nice. Save this. And let's make a print of it. That's quite large. Let's turn the scale down a little bit. So this time, let's just change the sheet scale. That brought everything down at once. My views are all locked together. That's good. So I'm not violating the glass box. Let's reproject this isometric. Make sure the hidden lines are turned off. And we'll make it uh, half size. See what that looks like. Oh, yeah. That's pretty. Okay, so page one of a sheet metal part should be dimensioned as just the way you want it to come into your factory, ready to install, good to go. Again, we're going to put the maximum length, width, and height on. Go to the outsides. Okay, so there's our overall dimensions. Next, we got to size and locate each feature. So that defines our rectangular piece of metal. We'll put in the bend radius. And this time I'm going to add a suffix that says both sides. And what that's telling the machinist is to do this bend radius here and here. We just keep the print a little bit cleaner. Let's give the vertical height of the flange. Nine twenty five both sides. And we'll put our distance from the edge of one inch and one inch. There we go. And that is all we need to fully define this. We do not have the thickness, but we're going to put that in as part of our material note. One thing we do need to do, it's probably not called my cool part. So let's go back into the part. We're going to fix the attributes. And let's fix the material as well. We'll edit our material. And this looks like good old 1010 readily bendable steel. We'll come in, we'll change the attributes. The part number is, that sounds like a good part number, description. Call it a 
margin sheet. We'll get rid of the vendor and the vendor part number because we're going to assume we make it. We'll say OK. Save it. All right. We need to fix our title block now. So I need to fix the date. 10920. See. We did this at one to one scale. One to one. And we are going to have a three sheet drawing for this. Okay. So there's our first title block, all good to go. Say OK. And we can put in our material note. Okay, page one is good to go. So page one is the part fully dimensioned exactly the way I want it to come into my factory. Page two, we're going to put a flat pattern on the sheet and we're going to fully dimension that. Choose my model. Okay, here's the important part folks. I'm going to say flat pattern as the reference configuration and also choose flat pattern down here. Now when we bring it in, we bring in the unbent object and we fully dimension it. So again, we start off maximum overall size. We don't need a side view on this one because it's flat. So there's nothing to describe and we have the thickness of the material note. Be careful not to double dimension. That's always a no-no. And then lastly, I'm going to dimension to the bed lines. So if I put my sheet metal bender right on this line and do what I'm told in the bend note, I should get my part exactly like the first page. Okay, so there's our fully defined flat pattern. That's pretty good. Our scale for this one, one to one. So let's change that. This will be two of three. Good. Save often. Okay, now we're going to create a flat pattern that is edges only. No bend notes, no bend lines, no threaded holes, or excuse me, thread symbols, no center marks, nothing. Just the stuff we need to send this to a laser cutter and have it cut out and made. So let's add another sheet. So we'll say insert sheet. 
and it says the format couldn't be located, to which we say fine. As long as you have standard sheet size clicked on and your formats are properly located, then we can come down to the end and here is the B size sheet to format for the class. That comes in automatically. Okay, for sheet three, we are not going to use it. That's a good demonstration of how to do it if you had a complex part. To get rid of the format, just come right over here, right click on the format and hit delete. And now let's bring in another flat pattern. So we'll say insert drawing view model the part. And I'm not going to delete these bad notes. I'm going to hide them. And I want to make sure that this is one-to-one -one scale. So I'm specifically saying one-to-one. -one. And that's good. Now I can use this view to create a DXF and send it to a computerized cutting machine of some sort. Laser, plasma, something like that. And this is all good. Save often. So again, sheet one, fully defined as it would be all bent up, ready to install. Sheet 2, flat pattern, fully defined with your bend notes. That's actually a little, get a little white space around that. And then sheet 3, edges only. Just the stuff that's going to be cut at one-to-one -one scale. If you have to change the paper size, that's completely fine. But edges only on sheet 3. Okay, so that, my friends, was Lesson 12. So thank you for watching, and I will see you next class.